Hi again, and uh, before we move on into painting foliage, I thought we'd just go ahead and take a look quickly at this category of media that we have here under uh, the the cartoon uh, modes that we were using. We were using this, uh, this cartoon potatoes, I guess it was called, or something like that, but uh, there's a couple of other interesting media in here. And uh, nobody really says we have to go in and paint foliage using the uh, the built-in particle foliage painting tools. We could just uh, use some of these pre preset medias. No reason we can't use those. There's uh, there's some preset grasses and things in there that we could use. So let's just take a look at those briefly. Uh, first things first, though. Let's go ahead and adjust the colors of this uh, these uh, rocks that we put in here. I'm going to select that layer and go to uh, and just adjust. Probably uh, hue saturation value will do the job. Uh, Alright, good enough for now. Um, might make these a little bit larger so we can see them better. because we're going to be working with layers in this project. Alright, so like I said, let's add a new layer and do some experimenting here. And uh, go to these media. There are some pretty good trees here. And given a proper color, I think we can do some neat things with these. Um, let's go ahead and use a, uh, a color theme in this. We haven't done this yet. I'll select the color picker. If you go to the themes tab, uh, there are some uh, editing tools for making color themes. Um, there's also the original pigment profiles, which was a version of color themes in itself. Um, the themes tab is a little bit more modern take on it. Um, back uh, in around 2005, we in introduced the idea of color themes uh, in the form of pigment profiles. And at the time, it was really kind of a a way of uh, remapping the color model into something that's more friendly to an artist's palette. Uh, the only difference really being uh, now is color themes use five colors and uh, pigment profiles use six colors and uh, the interface is a little bit different. So uh, that's something to be aware of. Be aware of. When I first started out in computer graphics, I, I realized that it's very useful to limit the color palette you're using uh, to get various artistic, um, not only artistic effects, but a unity of color. And that's something I think we should talk about in another video. But it's this idea of unity of color that uh, has really been a staple of uh, everything I've done uh, in the last probably 30 years uh, in computer graphics working with um, unified color palettes and such so uh, let's see I think I'll just pick your know, warmer tones maybe or warm cool watercolor cool palette maybe this one let's see how well let's pick one let's see how we'll get along with one of these though and this basically takes your entire color model and uses just a small set of colors from uh, uh, what you select in this thing and you can edit this say you want a color palette that's very warm you can uh, you can limit these cool colors and maximize your warm colors that's one possibility But uh, we'll come back to that later. Okay, let's just pick one. And we're going to be using a lot of earth tones, so this is probably a, a place to start. And uh, once we've got this, uh, we're using this fur preset here. Once we got this, there's some more things we can do with this. Let's uh, go to brush and store and manage a copy. That way we have access to uh, scaling this rotating it uh, and changing hue and all these other things and there's also of course the original brush settings where we can do these things randomly as well uh, but this gives us some extra options so we might keep that open 
Um, let's see. That's a good start. Uh, I want to paint some of these background uh, trees here. And I can erase part of that later, and I'll put some here as well. And then we'll just go to, say, an airbrush tool. And remember, uh, using that right mouse button uh, erases to the, uh, or draws to the, uh, the secondary color. We happen to have uh, white selected. And since our layer mixing mode is in multiply mode, that's going to be effectively erasing. So I'm just going to go ahead and go here. Do the uh, same thing over here. And that's a quick way of adding some background background trees in here. Uh, one thing you notice though is these are a little too uh, too dark. We want these to look like they're fading into the distance. One way you can do that is just by dropping this layer opacity. Uh, that's fine. Oh, in this case, I think I'll just adjust the colors. Let's see what we can do with this. Go to the uh, add mode instead of the multiply mode. That way we're adding color to this. Yeah, okay, that's a little too blue though. Let me just adjust the saturation on that. Down a smidge. Okay. And that's a good, uh, good way to add some background uh, items. We want to go ahead and start working on our foreground now. And uh, we're going to do that with, uh, well, we're going to want to paint some grass in here before we put any more trees in here. So let's go ahead and start painting some grass. I'm going to add yet another layer. That way we can come back and experiment later. And we'll try some things. Like I said, we had some uh, some cartoon presets. That's Instead of using a, a uh, one of these algorithmic uh, foliage uh, brush types that we have, we have quite a few. Very useful, and we'll do that. But let's also experiment with some of these preset brushes that are already made. Very, very easy to work with because they're presets. Um, now, something uh, to bear in mind is just you can't just start painting like this and expect it to look like it, it fits in part of your your image. You have to consider that things in the background are going to be smaller. They're going to be more faint. So, um, you might want to take and store and manage a copy and uh, change the scale down and change the uh, the hue saturated value or the RGB values and all these sort of things to make them lighter or darker. Um, or in our case, we can just do these with some of the original uh, presets like changing the size. Let's see, that's easy enough. And uh, let's see, some other things here, step and all these things. Uh, random hue saturation value. So that's one way we could go ahead and add some grass texture in here if we wanted to. Painting these in the background. And just doing a, since we're doing this in the background, that's probably fine. We're just adding, kind of really just adding some texture in there. We're not really painting something you would recognize specifically as grass. It's more of a grass texture. Uh, because it's being multiplied with the uh, the image underneath it. Um, this is kind of good though. If uh, you work in traditional media, um, you would do things like this. You would not um, be painting opaque grass on here. I mean... Traditional medias are not really opaque, uh, with the exception of perhaps gouaches. Uh, if you're painting watercolors, you would you would paint something that reveals the texture and the uh, the uh, the brushstrokes underneath of what you're painting. That would still be evident there. Um, the same with the acrylics, even oil colors, uh, when used in a uh, thinned fashion, will have the same uh, quality to it. Of, of continuing to re reveal the the, uh, the brush strokes that came before, so we're not doing anything particularly 
strange when we work in multiply mode. This is, in fact, a good way of emulating traditional media. Um, in fact, had we worked with a, a, a layer mode that was opaque, we would actually be blending uh, and averaging colors. And, th and that's alpha blending is basically averaging, but uh, in multiply mode, you're actually increasing intensity. So it's something that we like to use a lot. Um, I'm going to adjust these colors because remember these are in the background. And they're going to they fade with this fade with distance. And now I'm going to start working with these uh, these particle tools. And we have some nice just under the original particle dab. We have some nice tools for painting foliage. Uh, I'm rather fond of uh, tops are nice um, wind blown grass is one of my favorites right there all right and remember since, since we're working with the, the ones that are further away we want them to be a little bit smaller there's a size controller there and and uh, one thing to be aware of is if you uh, just like with these other brushes in uh, particles now in version 10 you can paint with the right mouse button and erase uh, so that's something we'll probably want to use as well I'm gonna go ahead and add another layer and start painting these are gonna be sort of the middle ground uh, bits of grass and I don't like that hard edge in the bottom so I can just go in and erase that hard edge towards the bottom and I should leave that open, but I want to paint over here. So, just filling in some of these open areas. Not worried so much about the final result because we're just sort of adding texture and color at this point. I'm going to go back to here, settings. Sorry, back to here, particles. Change that size up again start painting some of the more immediate foreground and again as we get closer to the bottom let me erase some of this and it's okay to leave some open areas too it's okay to leave some open areas this creates interest in fact I might go back to this original little stony layer and go ahead and erase in erase some of these stones um, see if I make if I use exclusive visibility we'll see which one we're, we're on we're on this one I'm gonna go ahead and just erase a few little grass shapes into this all right make all visible again go back to my grass layer and we can, of course, change the size, the gain, all these things. And I might add one more layer of grass right in the front foreground. Because since, like I said, these are uh, in multiply mode, we're actually increasing our the darkness in the foreground. We want to go a little darker and a little more deep colored in the in this foreground. Because it is in the foreground, we want it to look like it stands out. It's more, it's closer, it's darker, it's deeper colors. Uh, it makes it more pronounced. And uh, when we come back, we'll go ahead and start adding some, uh, some trees into this. So, thanks for watching again, and ta-ta for now.